The hits just keep on coming this week. We've got the satisfaction of Elon Musk's cyber trucks turning into rust buckets mm. on yesterday's episode. And now we've got an all timer in regards to someone getting scammed. And this didn't happen to just anyone. This massive scam was perpetrated on a financial advice columnist who not only followed up their own article about being scammed with another article about how not to be scammed. Uh, I guess she would know but also previously authored an article that alluded to their misfortune nearly a month earlier. It's it's a wild ride, and honestly, this is just me talking here, you, you kind of have to give her credit for being pretty honest about this. This is something so stupid and so seemingly obvious that most people would take this story to their graves. Yeah, I mean, like, I appreciate, like, this, you know, scams with technology and just the scam scam technology is getting out of hand. People are getting scammed left and right. And it is often uh, a very shameful, embarrassing thing. And like, and it, 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 and, it can uh, grow and spread because people are too ashamed yeah. to talk about the various ways that they've been so scammed. I, so I'm all for, you know, sharing a uh, harrowing personal experience, getting scammed for a shitload of money. But when you are a financial advice uh, columnist that does raise questions about your, skills in that regard yeah and also uh yeah it's just uh it's it you couldn't waterboard this out of me yeah Say it's, that. it's wild and she she did write at least two articles directly referencing it uh this it, it, this honesty it might save at least a few other people from falling victim to the same type of scam i mean it's <sighs> So the key takeaway, it's like, oh, like uh, people are like, oh, the, making like a bullet point checklist of like things to avoid. And it's like, no, just don't answer the fucking phone. Yeah. And don't I, answer the phone. I, I, That's, I thought, you will not get scammed if you do not answer the phone. In, in this specifically, every time that there's a bad decision being made, first of all, you want to scream, no, stop. Yeah. But don't also do that. she recognizes how dumb it is. Every, and, and then I thought this has to be fake. And it's like, go with your intuition. Your intuition was, was, according to your own writing, very correct every step of the way, and you denied your natural inclination to yeah. know that this was a scam. It's it's frustrating. It's dumb as hell. But you know what? Brave of her to tell everyone how dumb she acted. Yeah, congrats on your courage. Still very dumb. Very dumb. And you will see why in just a second. Yeah, so the article published last month in New York Magazine's The Cut section might have just been a little foreshadowing or the author of the piece had a very specific amount of money at the front of their mind when they were publishing it because it was titled, What It's Like to Take a $50,000 Pay Cut. Hmm. Uh, though the article simply highlights three people who took actual pay cuts for a variety of reasons, uh, it would be less than a month before the author published another article about themselves where they lost that exact same amount of money to a scammer in a way that was so obviously a scam it's hard to believe that she fell for it yeah and and going back to that it's just like it is very odd to write a article after you had gotten scammed for 50 grand about what it's like to take a fifty thousand dollar pay cut like almost seeking out advice so hey uh how have you adapted to yeah, losing well, <laughs> this significant amount of money? You lost exactly $50,000, I'm right? looking for a lot of people who uh, have turned their lives around after losing $50,000. Yeah, 50, it's got to be $50,000, though. That's the sweet spot. Anything less than that, uh, you know. Or more. It's not <laughs> relevant to what I'm seeking to write about. Yeah. Here. So, yeah, published this week with an original title of How I Got Scammed Out of $50,000. The author tells a wild story about being coerced into withdrawing 50 grand from their bank account in cash, putting that cash in a box, and then handing it over to someone in uh, real life, someone in a car who drove away with it. Yes. Um, All believe, believing that, are that very this, was, this was the by the book, this is how. This is how the CIA, CIA does it. The CIA. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many red flags, but the CIA one, as the, the freak that I am, the second they drop that, I'm like, oh. Get out of it. The CIA doesn't operate domestically. It's not in their charter. You I idiot. don't. This is under the purview and jurisdiction of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you want to destroy your liver, I don't suggest it. But uh, go ahead. Uh, if you want to play a drinking game, I don't endorse it. If you want to play a drinking game, do a shot every time there's a clear and blatant red flag in this story. Yeah. Yeah. So uh. keep in mind, this person is a financial advice columnist for New York Magazine who theoretically had every bit of help, fact-checking, and resources to at least double-check all of this at their disposal. Yeah. They could have texted 
any, I, I assume, co-worker or as we'll get to, like they have you, be- members of their family are lawyers and they didn't reach out to them. Yeah, yeah, just in their immediate social circle, there are people, but like, yeah, just as a financial advice columnist, you would assume there's some professional connections there as well. Yeah. They're like, hey, let me just run this by you. Does this seem legit? <laughs> yeah. The, truly, what she describes is intense and also unbelievable in every definition of the word. And just, it's a fucking slow motion train wreck. Yep, and it's enough to freak anyone out, but at what, at what point do you go from having a funny feeling about something to handing handing over 50 grand in cash to a stranger on the street? Again, this is an incredibly stupid mistake with an insanely lar- large amount of money, but hey, I gotta give off uh, the, the author credit for putting it out there so that others are at the very least aware of these kinds of tactics, I guess. Here's a few excerpts from the article, uh, which the article's subtitle is, I never thought I was the kind of person to fall for a scam. And links to the full articles, they're always down below in the description. On a Tuesday evening this past October, I put $50,000 in cash in a shoebox, taped it shut as instructed, and carried it to the sidewalk in front of my apartment, my phone clasped to my ear. Don't let anyone hurt me, I told the man on the line, feeling pathetic. You won't be hurt, he answered. Just keep doing exactly as I say. Three minutes later, a white Mercedes SUV pulled up to the curb. The back window will open, said the man on the phone. Do not look at the driver or talk to him. Put the box through the window, say thank you, and go back inside. Here's what I can't figure out. Why didn't I just hang up and call 911? Why didn't I text my husband or my brother, a lawyer, or my best friend, also a lawyer, or my parents, or one of the many other people who would have helped me? And those are great questions. Well, you see, got caught up in the moment. I mean, you get to be the protagonist of your own spy novel, and uh, you kind of want to see it through. I mean, the biggest, honestly, her biggest mistake out of all of them is just not understanding, like, the glacial speed of criminal justice in this country. Yes. We'll get to, like, the reasoning there, but it's just, like... It doesn't play like, out. It has, to, it has to happen right now. Before the bank's closed. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up. No, that's not how it fucking work. We have a, 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 an unmarked van showing up at your location. And, like, yeah, also, like, personally knowing multiple lawyers and not being like, hey, I should probably... <laughs> Texting while you're doing it. Yeah, I should probably... I, I, like, e- even if, assuming all of this is fucking legit, yeah. I should I should not be talking directly to the authorities about this. We don't cover every part of the article in here. You should go read the full thing. But, yeah, there is a section where she, like, texted her husband and then got spooked and deleted the text. Yeah. And he's like, hey, everything okay? No, everything's fine. But yeah, like, shoot off a text to maybe someone that works at your very illustrious magazine or your lawyer friends. Literally anything. Yeah, so the next few paragraphs talk sometimes arrogantly about how she is totally not the type of person who you would assume would get scammed because she's actually, she's really smart. Uh, She's married. She's got a great job. Yeah. Nevertheless, she fell victim to a scam. The same way all those poor, lonely saps can do. And here's how it went down from the article. A polite woman with a vague accent told me she was calling from Amazon customer service to check some unusual activity on my account. The call was being recorded for quality assurance. Oh, that's how you know it's real. I I mean, it seems sketchy, but they are recording it for quality assurance. Well, luckily I'll have plenty of evidence if this turns out to be a scam, because I'll just ask them for the recording that they took. Mm -hmm. Had I recently spent $8,000 on MacBooks and iPads? I had not. Then Krista explained that Amazon had been having a lot of problems with identity theft and false accounts lately. It had become so pervasive that the company was working with a liaison at the Federal Trade Commission and was referring defrauded customers to him. Could she connect me? Um, sure, I said. The author was then transferred to a guy who said he was investigator with the FTC and even gave her his badge number. (laughs) As if he was a cop of some kind. Yes, it's me, Officer FTC. He gave me the badge number. Yeah. And provided her with information, like her street address and the last four digits of her social in order to come across as believable. Weird. But yeah, pretty intricate, somewhat believable scam, though she did check her Amazon account, which showed no unusual activity and didn't even have accounts that they were referencing, which is like, okay, well, you figure this out. Yeah. Bye. The people playing the drinking game are already drunk by all the red flags we've seen just in this part. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think her problem is just, and this is like Americans in general are just uh, kind of pushovers. Like we want to help. We want to assume in a lot of cases, like, uh, you know, why would someone lie about that? They, we're problem solvers here. And especially the people that answer the phones and just want everyone to be happy. Yeah. Uh, specifically, lots of old people. 
I know. I know. I mean, but like if you'd spent like seven decades of your life with the humble telephone being such a useful central part of your existence. Yeah. And then just in your twilight years, it it turns evil. That would be hard to accept. That would be hard to, uh, you know, get used to and, and yeah. reorganize your life. Well, so I get it. This woman is not old, though. No. <laughs> I think she's like the same age as we are. Yeah. So the FTC investigator went on to claim that people using people were using 22 bank accounts tied to her name and had also acquired multiple vehicles and properties in her name and that some of the vehicles were used in crimes, very bad crimes, and that one of the properties had been busted for drug smuggling and that she had warrants out for her arrest because of this in two states for things like cybercrime, money laundering, and drug trafficking. Oh, God, I'm an international criminal. Yeah. At yeah. this point, I mean, call the fucking cops, or in her case, one of her multiple family members who are lawyers. Yeah, no, that's like, you lawyer the fuck up. Yeah. But no, she kept, go yeah, even if this was an official like, on the phone, okay. no, I, I got to talk to All right, lawyer. our conversation's over. This yeah. is, it's lawyer time, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but no, she kept going along with the scammers, despite even doing an online search for her own name and any indication of warrants while they were on the phone. So many red flags. But the article continues, Calvin told me to listen carefully. The first thing you must do is not tell anyone what is going on. Everyone around you is a suspect. These are sophisticated criminals with a lot of money at stake, he continued. You should assume you are in danger and being watched. You cannot take any chances. He convinced her to let him know about her bank accounts and the balances, which added up to an apparently $80,000. Uh, he told her to stand by so that he could transfer her to someone with the CIA. Beep, bop, boop. All right. Hello, CIA, Central Intelligence Agency. We're all connected. It's very easy. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're... I don't, it's the CIA, and we are investigating this single case of identity theft in the domestic United States. That's what we do here Luckily, at the CIA. Uh, wait, this is the CIA. Amazon called you first, right? And that's how they led you to yeah. me? That's yeah. how things go. Uh, when you talk to Amazon, they have a direct line to... Uh, we all got switchboards, and we all just go beep, bop, boop. All right, the, the CIA will speak to you now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it continues. I checked my bank accounts, credit cards, and credit score. Nothing looked out of the ordinary. I knew I should probably talk to a lawyer or maybe call the police. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Though I was doubtful that they would help. What was I going to say? My identity was stolen and I think I'm somehow in danger. Yes, you did. <laughs> That's exactly That's what you do. Literally what you do. That is like, that is so much of what their job is these days. Yeah. They might not enjoy it. They might not make it easy for you. But yeah, this is a problem that happens constantly. Yeah. He explained that the CIA would need to freeze all the assets in my name. They can't do that, including my actual bank accounts. In the eyes of the law, there was no difference between the real and the fraudulent ones, he said. He asked me how much cash I thought I would need to support myself for a year if necessary. My assets could be frozen for up to two years if the investigation dragged on, he added. There could be a trial. I might need to testify. These things take time. I don't know, $50,000, I said. Okay, he said. You need to go to the bank and get that cash out now. You cannot tell them what it is for. In one of my last cases, the identity thief was someone who worked at the bank. So <laughs> This thing goes deep, baby. They got their hands in everything. Yeah. They're, uh, they're, everyone is a suspect. Like I said, everyone is a suspect. I mean, I will say, like, as scams go, this is a really well-crafted one. Like, yeah. they've clearly, like, they've sort of looked at uh, previous models of scams and seen the weak points yeah. and uh, fortified them. They ran this up the ladder very fast. They went from Amazon customer service to Yeah, CIA I mean, if no she stayed on the phone a little bit longer, who knows? Joe Biden might have picked up the hey, phone. Hey, <laughs> this is Joe. I'm tired of all this malarkey. We need to get this sorted out. You need to give old Joe $50,000. This is Joe Biden. I'm going to be sending the presidential limousine to your street <laughs> in about, I don't know, five minutes. And um, just toss it in the just back. Just toss the $50,000 into the back. Mm -hmm. Do not make eye contact with me, President Joe Biden. But yeah, there's, there's just so many parts of this story where you want to physically jump into the screen and yell, No! Stop! What are you doing? You are being scammed! This is a scam! Reading this article was like watching Uncut Gems for me. Yes. You're making a bad decision! It's yeah. gonna ruin your life! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not a, not a fun read. So the CIA guy continued with, It's important that I monitor where this money goes from now on. Remember, all of your assets are part of this investigation. Then he told me that one of his colleagues would meet me at my apartment at 5 p.m. to guide me through the next steps. 
I want to reiterate here that we are doing just a, a somewhat brief overview of this. And throughout the story, she continues to second guess herself multiple times, but soldiers on. All these red flags are happening to her and she refuses to look at them. So that last part led her to actually going down to her bank in person and withdrawing $50,000 in cash while the scammer sat on speakerphone in her pocket. With the bank, like, I think now they legally, like, they they handed her, like, a pamphlet with the money being like, hey, usually when someone's doing this, there's a decent chance you're being scammed. She said the teller, like, like, gave her a very funny face. Yeah, no, but, like, literally, like, they gave her, like, a pamphlet. It's just like, I don't know if you're being scammed. Yeah, also <laughs> another big tell, and this comes from just hours of watching that guy on Twitch who deals with scammers. Kit Boga? Yeah, who uh, they always want to be on the phone while you're doing the yeah, transaction yeah. to prove that they're going to be able to receive the funds. Right. So, like, having the CIA on the speakerphone and being like, no, I need to hear everything that happens at the bank. Yeah, Again. and, like, he's on with her for, like, presumably hours. Yes. It's like, yeah, if you're an agent at the CIA, you're like, no, nope, sorry, sorry, no, cancel all my meetings. I'm uh, on speakerphone. With, Over 50 grand. With his lady. Yeah. Uh, and then, by the way, uh, after the transaction at the bank, the CIA guy congratulated her on a job well done when she confirmed that she had received the money. Hey, good job. Mission accomplished. Yeah. He had her box it up, take a photo of it, and prepare it for retrieval, saying that his colleague, an undercover CIA agent, would be coming by to grab the money and keep it safe. Which, just fucking Christ, lady. Come on. All right, lady, you've watched Jack Bauer, right? Or sorry, Jack Jack Ryan. Whatever. You've seen the Jack show? Yeah. It's, this is just like that. And I'm going to need you to full cooperation. Someone's going to show up unmarked, undercover, and you just toss it in the back. You just toss that money in there. That's how we do it, the CIA. We yep. do things. We're rough riders here. You are the main character. You are Agent Argyle. <sighs> it continues. A little after 6 p.m., Michael, uh, the, the, CIA the, the CIA man, told me to go downstairs. His colleague was arriving. My husband had just come home from work and was reading to our son. What's going on? Is everything okay? He asked as I put my coat on. I motioned to the phone and shushed him. Then I whispered, I have to go downstairs and meet a guy who's helping with the identity theft case. I'll explain more later. He frowned and silently mouthed, what? (laughs) I told him I had to go. I met the SUV at the curb and put the money in the back seat. And you got scammed. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah, she went about her night, then called the number back to check in. And a woman answered and said, "Uh, CIA agent Michael, he's actually really busy. So uh, he'll call you back. But it's all fine. Uh, She knew that the call would never come, and soon enough it was all being reported to the police with essentially zero recourse because she'd literally handed over cold hard cash. The final statement on this whole debacle was a fresh new article that she wrote hours after the other one was published titled, How to Protect Yourself Against Scams. Again, she would know. I don't know. I mean... I I lived it. Don't, just don't be me. Do the opposite of everything I did in this other article. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, she would know better than most people. But if, if you want a taste of the advice, the actual real police who responded to her after the fact informed her that no government agency will ever ask you for money, which, yeah, that's... I mean, the IRS, they'll ask you for okay, money. Okay, but like... But not, through official channels. Yeah, yeah. there's a formal process for yeah, it. They're nope. not... The IRS isn't having you put uh, cash in a fucking shoebox and put it in the back of a car yes. that you don't know. Uh, no one from the government is going to cold call you and demand cash or gift cards or anything like that to be paid immediately either the f- over the phone or in person. The government in general is not going to call you for fucking anything. No. Like, is it, that's, the, that's the wildest thing here is, like, you would, if this was true, if you had had your identity stolen by, like, the fucking Sinaloa cartel, you would not be hearing about this first from yeah. Amazon customer service. And you FBI would have an agent. FBI agent at your fucking house. Yes. Yes. And, like, and it's also funny, it's like, the way it starts is it's the Amazon thing is like, oh, but, you know, this happens a lot. Should we transfer you to our FTC guy? I mean, you don't have to. And she's like, uh, yeah, OK. And it's like with everything that comes later, it's like, wait, so this was optional? Yeah. Um, but I guess, I mean, look, I'm not going to say it could happen to all of us. This one, 100 percent couldn't be me built different. Yeah. But like I get that, you know, when when you're stressed out and you're overly trusting, um, you, you do get the blinders on. You, yeah. You do start not. Never answer your phone. Don't answer your phone ever. Or reply to text messages you don't know. Yeah. Um, also, like if it's if it's someone claiming to be the bank, if it's someone claiming to be anything, you say, 
oh, okay, well, I'm busy right now, but I'll call you back in like five minutes. And you go online and you look up what the actual official number is and you call them back. And if they say, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. No one called you. People can spoof numbers, but uh, typically when you call the correct number back, right. it's going to be the yeah, correct place. Spoofing place. only works one way. Mm -hmm. And like, that's like, that's like just never anything that is an incoming call assume is a scam. Yeah. Outgoing calls. You can feel pretty safe about as long as you know who you're calling. But speaking of people who are caught in a weird reality between in grave danger and physically unharmed, but almost certainly running afoul of his local government, rumors were flying this week that Ian Miles Chong had been, or was about to be, executed by the Malaysian government for professing his love of Israel while living in a Muslim-majority nation. Wait, Ian Miles Chong isn't a uh, bread-blooded American? Elliot, that's Ian where Miles you're mistaken. Chong, the, the Twitter account who talks about Donald Trump and how cool it is to be a Republican 24 hours a day yeah. is in fact a Malaysian who has never stepped foot on U.S. soil. Pretty surprising. I know we've talked about it before, but for anyone that missed all of those episodes... This is the first I'm hearing about this. <laughs> he is not an American. That's American he's speaking, but that kid is not American. No, he's not. He's Malaysian. And they have some interesting laws over in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Malaysia just recently, their government arrested someone for supporting the establishment of Malaysia-Israel ties. So yeah, this, is, this wasn't outside of the realm of possibility, not the execution thing, but him being in trouble yeah, for his posts. Uh, Malaysia, like, I mean, a lot of countries are very uh, icy towards Israel. Malaysia is one of the few where, like, the Malaysian passport, it says, like, on page one, like, valid worldwide, except in Israel. You yeah. cannot go to Israel. First off, it, it, like we said, if you were somehow still unaware, Ian Miles Chong is from and lives full-time in Malaysia, has never set foot in the United States. Malaysia. <laughs> despite posting like a right-wing chud about our politics nonstop for years and presenting himself as some kind of expert on American politics and culture war issues. He literally just gets on Twitter, posts rage bait, conservative conspiracies, and worst of all, resharing viral videos in order to try and make money off of Elon's shitty revenue sharing program. Uh, one of the funniest early uh, examples of uh, him giving the game away was it was like 2020 and Joe Biden, while he was running for president, he went to Dairy Queen mm. and he flipped over the yeah. the frozen drink. And he, he didn't understand. He was talking, he's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, no, it's it's the thing they do there to show, because he's he's ne he's never been even to today America. he posted he doesn't about know what Dairy Queen is. even today he posted about Tucker Carlson being fascinated by shopping carts in Russia when it's like it's the shopping carts where you have to put a coin in while you oh, shop. Yeah, yeah. It's like we have had those for years, decades uh -huh. even. Yeah. Sometimes our shopping carts have little magnets that stop them from going too far away from the store. Yeah. Uh, big shocking news to apparently Tucker Carlson, who clearly doesn't shop for himself, and Ian Miles Chong, who doesn't fucking live here. Also, he looks like this. So you almost kind of have to feel bad for him if it weren't for the fact that he's also a terrible person on the inside as well. Was that the picture where he's like, his mouth is... You know what? What's up with that mouth? You what know that what? mouth do? While yeah. we're filming this, I don't even know which picture I'm going to use. I just know that there's one that exemplifies... There's one, like, notoriously, his, uh, it's like the worst picture. Like, I, I'll admit, like... There's pictures of him I've seen where I'm like, yeah, I mean. Kind of looks like a normal person. Looks like, yeah, but there's like one that's like, the phone is like two inches from his face wide, and he's like. There's one on him on a webcam uh, where he's like hunched over. Yeah, over. it's just. The funniest on. ones are the ones where he's he's obviously graying now. He's in his mid-30s. He's graying yeah. very rapidly. But uh, uh, he tr he really tries to make himself look like a distinguished, like a talking head that would appear on CNN or something. Yes. Very funny, but uh, yes. So to this recent news, about a week ago, someone posted a thread of dumb shit that Ian Miles Chong has posted over the years. And it's been many years, but also in recent months, highlighting some of his recent posts about Gaza. Uh, this thread went viral and it grabbed the attention of local news outlets who <laughs> reached out to clarify his stances on certain issues. Well, yeah, we gotta get this guy on the phone. Outlets in his own country where seemingly he is not very well known. So they're like, wait, he has how many followers? Oh, wait, I, we thought this guy he was from America. Here. He's uh, here? Yeah, they, they wanted to clarify this because some of these stances could theoretically get him in trouble with his government. And we should point out that despite our dislike of Ian, it is actually bad that his government is so strict regarding restricted speech. Yeah. You'd think that maybe a little introspection into his own country might do him some good uh, when, the, you know, when he's talking so much shit about things in our country yeah. and, you know, free speech issues and whatnot. 
Uh, but yeah, he's obviously been too busy trying to grift off of American culture war issues to have time for any of that. Anyway, when the New Straits Times reached out to Chong, he changed his tune completely, deleting some of the tweets that he'd posted and clarifying to the paper that he does not advocate for Israel, despite claims circulating on social media. Chong said that he has consistently voiced support for peace between both groups and backs Palestine's right to exist on various platforms. They added that Chong, affiliated with Rebel News, a right-leaning pro-Israeli Canadian news organization, is a Malaysian who has been deeply engaged in American and European political discourse online for years. This is the first I'm hearing about this. So that story ran, and what followed was a nonstop multi-day trend of people claiming that Ian Miles Chong had been arrested and or executed this is for, a great bit. for his pro-Israel views, which <laughs> resulted in his name being listed on Twitter's trending topics tab multiple times for varying lengths of time. And users who clicked on that topic were served up a seemingly endless feed of people mourning <laughs> the death of Ian Miles Chong. We didn't always agree on everything, but... <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's just not right. People were showing fake news reports. They're they're stating, yeah, although we disagreed with him, <laughs> that we were gonna miss him, stuff like that. Uh, Miles Chong himself even responded to the accusations, claiming that he was still alive, despite community notes indicating the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> This user is dead. Uh, one hilarious exchange showed a community note which was correct, but delivered that news in the most disrespectful way possible, stating. Unfortunately, Ian Miles Chong is still alive. And Chong actually responded to that note, highlighting <laughs> that it said, unfortunately, with someone replying to his reply, saying, community notes are the authority here, bro. Oh. So people continued to dunk on him in the following days, posting memorials, highlighting the most brain-dead posts from his past, or claiming that Elon Musk was going to <laughs> evacuate him out of Malaysia before the government got to him. That last one was funny because, like Donald Trump, Elon Musk doesn't give a shit about anyone but himself when push comes to shove. Yeah, save me, Elon, please. Maybe he'll design some sort of uh, Ian Miles Chong-sized submarine to get him out of there. <laughs> We're going to have to make this one a little bit bigger. But uh, the good news is, is you can goon to your heart's content once you're in there. That's right. The memes got kicked into overdrive, though, following the initial fake death claims when users started indicating... <laughs> that Miles Chong had also violated some of Malaysia's other extremely strict laws, not just the stuff about Israel. Yeah. Uh, specifically, they got some pretty strict laws when it comes to drugs. Yeah. And here's some examples that we found. It's fucking crazy to me that this whole website is talking about Ian Miles Chong, the man who sells me weed whenever I'm in <laughs> Malaysia. <laughs> it feels at least a little bad to laugh about this, but uh, th someone replied, does he still have the gun collection? <laughs> Oh yeah, hundreds of them. And all those custom targets of the king's face in the basement. <laughs> Little creepy. <laughs> Someone else posted the meme of writer uh, Jim Downey on Conan O'Brien's podcast, the, the Jeff Epstein yeah. thing. But oh, the, the financier? But uh, in, this, in this case, he's comically trying to clarify who they're talking about, saying above the photo, Ian Chong, the Malaysian weed dealer? And another said... I'm very offline, so Ian Miles Chong sounded familiar, but I was unsure who he was. Then I realized, that's the man who sold me weed while I was visiting family in Malaysia. It's hard to forget a legendary <laughs> drug dealer who shows you his gun collection slash his plots to overthrow his country. And then uh, the Waffle House, great account. They had a significant hand in fueling, fanning the flames of these execution rumors. Yeah. Uh, they posted a, a photo of some ecstasy tablets with the caption... In all seriousness, though, I was traveling through Southeast Asia last year, and when we hit Malaysia, Ian Miles Chong saw my posts and DM'd me to say if I needed any party favors, he'd gladly hook it up. Dude came through with the molly. It was so epically clutch. R.I.P., homie. <laughs> Jesus fuck. Whew, well, uh, he is alive. He's not dead, yeah. And apparently and that's he's fine. Not, in, not, in, not in trouble, though I would assume he is going to uh, pull back on some of the... Uh, Posts about Gaza. Yeah, I don't know what he was thinking with that. He wasn't thinking. He was just, just, well, he was thinking. He was thinking about that money that he was going to get out of the ex-revenue sharing platform. He's a fucking, he's a, he's a marabou. That's what he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's like the American version of an Angliophile. A marabou. A marophile. Like the Ameriphiles, they both sound bad, so. I like a marabou. Yeah. But speaking of right-wing grifters, 
The next one actually does live in the United States, but is currently trying to pull the biggest scam of her career by switching parties to run as a Democrat for a seat on her county's school board. And Republicans have made a habit of doing this in recent years, not just for school board seats, but for nearly every other government position as well when they reside in a primarily liberal area. Yeah, so... They, they still the, hold their same beliefs. Pretty much the entire state of California and the entire state of Massachusetts and also like the New York City metro area... The you or, know all the ones. Yeah, it's like, but yeah, it's there's they're one party governments essentially at this point. So conservatives just switch to Democrat yeah, they to just try like to change. sneak their way in. Yeah, uh, it happens all the time, especially here in Los Angeles. In fact, Adam Conover just did a whole video series about this exact thing. People fall for it too. With that Rick Caruso saga was so dumb. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Bethany Mandel. That's who we're talking about. Her case is even funnier because she's been very, very publicly conservative for years. Writing articles like, we need to start befriending neo-Nazis. <laughs> and one about Palestinians titled, and for the algorithm, we are, first of all, sorry that we even have to say these words, but we're quoting her words. These are not ours. Not nuking these fucking animals is the only restraint I expect, and that's only because the cloud would hurt Israelis. Her words. Registered Democrat. I mean, Bethany to Mendel. be fair, a lot of registered Democrats uh, feel also, similarly, yeah. including our president. Uh-huh. Anyway, yeah. while those well, were... Well, uh, they were a little over the top there, Jack. Oh, over the top, Joe? Over the top? Ha! Ugh. Wow! Anyway, while uh, those statements from Bethany Mandel are absurd and disgusting points of view, she is definitely most famous for being the woman who wrote an entire fucking book about woke indoctrination and then failed to even be able to define the word woke when being interviewed about her book, which, of course, revolves around how much she hates things that are woke. Could, could, would you mind defining woke? Because it's come up a couple times that I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So, I mean, woke is sort of the idea that um, I. This is going to be one of those moments that goes viral. I mean, yeah. So that lady's running as a Democrat for her county school board, and luckily it's not going well because of how infamous. Her online persona is yeah. also her kids don't attend school there. She is a your kids don't even go. She here. homeschools her kids. Yeah, her explanation of that is fascinating. So anyway, here's Rolling Stone with more. It's an interesting decision for several reasons. She homeschools her kids. The county is a Democratic stronghold. Mandel is also currently suing the County Board of Education for denying her media access to an event about LGBTQ books. Her counsel in the case, the America First Legal Foundation, which is led by Donald Trump's hard right White House advisor, Stephen Miller. Side note, have you been getting the Stephen Miller uh, America First Legal ads on Twitter? No. Oh, they're so fucking funny. Well, I, I probably have it blocked because I just block everything. Oh, no, they look like it's they look exactly like the kind of like TV lawyer ads you get on TV. It's like he's following the a White House's Stephen template. Miller doing like fucking Saul Goodman ads on Twitter. It's weird. But it's like, have you been canceled? By, by the woke <laughs> scolds. It's weird. Uh, Mandel's campaign is part of a broader push by conservative culture warriors to take over school boards and decide what children can be taught. Nationally, the fight has been led by an organization called Moms for Liberty. Mandel attended its annual summit last summer. She spoke with the outlet about her bid for the seat. Mandel admits it's a bit weird to want to help lead the school board when her kids don't attend their local schools. She points out, there are members of the board who don't have children in the public schools. There are members of the board in other areas who don't even have children. I think that's weird. I do at least have children. So you admit that it's weird. Yeah, I think, yeah, it, it, yes. Uh, <laughs> but at the very least, she does seem to be aware that she doesn't have a shot in hell at actually getting elected. And it's clearly just, she's doing this for more attention despite claiming otherwise. Yeah. I'm not naive about my chances. I've seen an electoral map. I understand where I live, she says. However, she claims she's seen people on local message boards in recent days leaving comments to the effect of, my fucking hate Bethany Mandel. Everything about her makes my skin crawl. But maybe someone needs to shake things up. <laughs> I have a unique position to try to affect change, she says, noting her public profile should bring attention to the race. I couldn't not try and think that I could have made a difference. Okay. Luckily, the one thing she seems to be right about are her chances at actually being elected. But it is funny that how just in this apparently real message board that she's been reading. That, I fucking hate this bitch. But <laughs> she can really shake things up. Bethany Mandel can go straight to hell, 
but not until I get her elected to the local school board. Yeah, she's like, ah, if I throw a little self-deprecation in there, it comes off as more believable. Mm-hmm. Why would I say that about myself? Anyways. We yeah. do have more news to get to in just a second. But first, let's thank today's sponsors, starting with Mint Mobile. There you go. On average, it takes about 30 days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. And, buddy, it's been a lot more than that. Mm-hmm. So if saving money was on your 2024 list, your odds not looking good right now. But luckily, I have a 100% guaranteed way to save you money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That is unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans for just 15 bucks a month. Say bye bye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. Ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's limited time deal and get premium wireless service for just 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash newsdump. That is mintmobile.com slash newsdump. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash newsdump. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. And this episode is also sponsored by Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars rover, and now they are bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Razor blades are like diving boards. The longer the board, the more the wobble, the more the wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. Ouch! A bad shave isn't a blade problem, it's an extension problem. By using aerospace-grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of a human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. But wait, it gets better. The razor has built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no planned obsolescence. The Henson Razor works with standard dual-edge blades to give you that old-school shave with the benefits of new-school tech. Once you own a Henson Razor, it is only about 3 to $5 per year to replace the blades. And honestly, we love this razor, mainly because it is infinitely reusable, it gets the job done extremely well, and you are not contributing to more plastic pollution in the process. Also, the handle feels nice, got a good weight to it. It's also, like they said, ridiculously cheap to refill over time. Plus, it's always fun to reject modernity and embrace tradition. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash newsdump to pick the razor for you and use code newsdump and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N. S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash news dump and use code news dump. All right, it's back into the news now and it's time to laugh at law enforcement once again. But this time it's not 100% funny. It's, I mean, a lot of things could have gone wrong. It's funny because nothing horrific. It seems it's the, it's such a chaotic situation that it's a miracle. No one was hurt. Yeah. Uh, So you can laugh. But not too hard because the person, there was a person in the back of the squad car uh, who was being detained. Luckily, they didn't get hit at all, which feeds into the fact that the cops have no fucking idea. They can't even shoot. Bop, bop, bop. They're <laughs> fucking stormtroopers. Yeah. Uh, but the the situation that led to this is, it's just odd. It, it, it's not funny like when that cop fell down the slide. Yeah, at a that was funny. Hilarious. I don't care who you speed. are. That's funny. And making just impact noises the entire way. That was legitimately funny. This one is funny in a <clears throat> almost a Reno 911 type of way where the cop is so completely inept at their job and o- so overly trigger happy and easily startled that it almost turns into a completely fucked situation. But yeah, it is scary because of this over the top reaction to something completely normal, which is an acorn falling on the hood what? of his what patrol the car. Fuck? An acorn? I've been hit! So the acorn falls. I'm going to kill every chipmunk. Yeah, the acorn falls. It makes a thud on the hood. He fucking dives, rolls around the ground, screaming shots fired, shots fired, starts unloading his entire clip in the direction of his car, and then claims that he's been hit. I've been hit. Something bet me. This was a moment he's played out in his head for years being on the force, 
when am I going to get to be in a shootout? They just send me to like deal with fucking bullshit. I haven't even gotten to fire my gun yet. But when I do, it's going to look, I'm, I'm going to be like in a John Woo movie. I'm going to barrel roll and I'm going to fucking empty out that clip and I'm just going to turn my target into red mist. I, I, look, you're going to be There's fucking. There's going to be doves flying around. The, the person who was detained very fucked mentally because of all this. Yeah. And posted as such. They talked about how like fucked up this made them. But also like think about you're sitting detained in a squad car. You see an acorn fall and hit. Next thing you know, this cop is rolling away, screaming that you're shooting at him. You're like, ah, oh, fucking, that's it. My life's over. 100%. If he had killed this guy, uh, the body cam footage would have been lost and uh, a weapon would have yeah. ended up. Uh, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it's good that it worked out the way it did because the other way is not great. It's not great. Anyway, this is all over an acorn falling and hitting the roof of his car. And while it is funny in an absurd sense that he overact, overreacted just so extremely, it's also another terrifying example of cops immediately unloading their firearm the second they get scoop, spooked by anything. Yeah. Luckily, they are trigger happy. Yeah, it's not really what you want. No. Not really something that makes anyone more safe. I would mm. say it makes everyone less safe. Yeah. That's just me. But I, I would say that we are less safe if there are police just emptying... Entire magazines at the slightest, uh, n you know, unexpected noise. Yeah. Luckily, in this case, no one was injured, though, which is insane because there was a suspect handcuffed and sitting in the back of the car that was being shot at. Also, the officer's partner joined in on the shooting because she assumed he was telling the truth. And despite shots coming in from two angles, the person they detained was miraculously spared. Yeah. Why? Uh, you get a zero for duck hunt. Uh, it, yeah, that's... That's the craziest part is, uh, hey. Both of them just shooting randomly all over the place. It's not good that America's cops are trigger happy, incompetent, and scared of their own shadow. But on the bright side, they also can't shoot for shit. Mm -hmm. So where's the problem? Anyway, uh, here's the Daily yeah. Beast with more on these fucking morons. Jesse Hernandez of the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office in the Florida Panhandle resigned a month after the incident as his superiors ultimately determined his use of force was not objectively reasonable. Footage of the incident, which occurred in November, surfaced for the first time this week. In it, Hernandez is seen flinging himself to the ground while calling out shots fired four times. He does a roll, breaks his sunglasses, and then pulls out his handgun and opens fire at his own patrol car. Hernandez's partner, Sergeant Beth Roberts, emerges and opens fire herself after confirming with Hernandez that someone shot at him. Making the situation all the more baffling, Hernandez, while firing around 18 shots, was grunting and yelled out to his partner, I'm hit! Oh, I'm hit! But in reality, Hernandez's yeah. department, they determined that he was never shot at all. As the detained suspect, 22-year-old Marquise Jackson, a black man, was not armed. Instead, cops said that he sat helpless in the back of the patrol car while a barrage of shots were fired at him by Hernandez and Roberts. Uh, Jackson wrote in a lengthy Facebook post that the incident left him damaged for life, despite miraculously not being struck by the officer's gunfire. And, uh, I mean, I guess that's one way of looking at it. I, it would be very traumatizing. I'm not going to not gonna pretend it wouldn't be. But I would also feel like, am I invincible? Yeah. <laughs> am I impervious to gunfire? It would at the very least give you a new lease on life. Yeah, holy fucking shit. Yeah. Anyway, this is what we say time and time again about these shootings and shootings in general. Uh, even if someone doesn't die, they could be damaged mentally or physically for life by simply just being in the vicinity. Yeah, or getting struck by a bullet and not dying because yeah. that's going to fuck you up really bad, too. It's an incredibly hard thing to live with, to, you know, despite not being killed. So, yes, even someone who was shot at but didn't get hit is still a victim of the shooting who has to deal with that trauma forever. Yeah. But let's switch to topics. Uh, let's switch topics to something less upsetting. Would you look at the time? It appears as though the grace period between purchasing one of those Apple Vision Pro headsets and being able to return it for a full refund is coming to a close. And shockingly, shockingly, many people are choosing to return the $3,500 headsets for a plethora of reasons. Mainly, it's too fucking expensive and doesn't offer very much to the average user, even at a much lower price point. So yeah, a bunch of people bought these things, they made stupid videos about them, got millions of views, and now pff, they're returning them. Yeah, got, they got all the content. Yeah, but it's not just weirdo content creators, though. It looks as though a lot of people are having a bit of buyer's remorse when it comes to the Vision Pro. 
and some are even reporting headaches and ruptured blood vessels as a result of extended use. Here's The Verge with more. Comfort is among the most cited reasons for returns. People have said the headset gives them headaches and triggers motion sickness. The weight of the device and the fact that most of it is front-loaded has been another complaint. Parker Ortolani, The Verge's product manager, told me that he thought using the device led to a burst blood vessel in his eye. At least one other person noted they had a similar experience with redness. Despite being as magical to use as I had hoped, it was simply way too uncomfortable to wear, even for short periods of time, both due to the weight and the strap designs. I wanted to use it, but dreaded putting it on, says Ortolani, who also posted about returning the device. It's just too expensive and unwieldy to even try to get used to the constant headaches and eye strain I was experiencing. I'll be back for the next one. But yeah, the hardware isn't the only issue. Another common complaint is the Vision Pro doesn't offer enough productivity relative to the price. One user noted on threads that looking at Figma screens made them feel dizzy, but that the device also wasn't applicable to their work. Another engineer wrote on the social media platform X that the coding experience failed to convince him and focusing issues caused headaches. If I'm not using this for productivity, and if I don't love it for entertainment, and if there aren't enough games to play on it, I can't justify keeping it, one Reddit user wrote. Yeah. Plus, uh, I mean, I, I feel like a lot of these people, they're not admitting it, but they were convinced when Mark Zuckerberg went on Instagram the other day and talked a bunch of shit on it and yeah. said, you know, I, I still think we have the best headset. I mean, for the price, yeah, he's not lying. I mean, he did, he did make like a... a he made a decent case for it. He, he was like, He's I like, thought we, this was going to be like the premium version of ours, but it's not even as good yeah, as Yeah, well, the point he made is like, yeah, the technology is way better, but like the price difference is like seven times more expensive than uh, the whatever the meta one's called. And, the Quest, uh, yeah. And uh, the meta one is like open source for development, so there's It already has an endless ecosystem amount, of games yeah, and yeah. programs. He, he raised a lot of good points. But who could have seen this coming? People having a little buyer's remorse over a $3,500 toy... And again, it's not as if this is the final version of this product. If Apple continues to actively develop for it, the price theoretically would come down, though it's Apple, so it'll remain yeah. a premium. Also, I mean, like, the iPhone 1 was a similar product in that, like, it was impressive. Like, it did stuff that phones didn't do, but it also, like, it was like, okay, do I really need this? Also, it can't really do all that much. I don't know. I was coming from the sidekick, so it was like it was a big step up. I, it did take a little while to get used to the not yeah, having a keyboard. But it was uh, also not. I mean, it was expensive, but it wasn't. Like, imagine if the first iPhone had been like a fifteen hundred dollars or something. Uh, but yeah, eventually this thing will have more things for people to do. But like we said in previous videos, there's simply no reason to buy this when, if you really want to dive into VR, you could buy the Quest for three thousand dollars less and actually get way more for your money. Yeah. Or just go demo this. They have demos at the Apple stores. Get oh, your, I do kind of want to do that. Get, get I your am fix. curious Get about your that. fix. Yeah. And then you'll be like, ah, the 20 minutes that you enjoyed, that's all you need. Come back in a couple years. Anyways, also this week was the return of Jon Stewart to The Daily Show, and I got to say... Uh, this is very millennial of me. Yeah, Dad Help. finally came home from the cigarette store, baby. It was a very comfortable <laughs> experience. I felt cozy and happy, and look, he, he's got it. Yeah, it was weird, because, you know, it's been so long, and, I mean, my viewpoints on a lot of things have uh, sort of developed since he left, but at the, I'm back in the day, I watched that shit. It was my every night I watched... The Daily Show and The Colbert Report. It inspired a lot and of what we do here. Uh, I, I, yeah. When they announced that he was coming back to The Daily Show, I kind of assumed, like, ah, I've probably outgrown this. It's probably not going to have the same spark for me. But, uh, no, it, it, it's like riding a bike. He's, like, back where he belongs, making, just putting to shame everyone that uh, hosted the show while in his absence. Yeah. Uh, not that, you know, that... They were, they they were, were great. fine, but yep. they were not Jon Stewart. Yeah, there's he this... fucking killed it. And the, as proof that he killed it, uh, every fucking, like, blue MAGA liberal is, like, losing their so shit. So angry. Like, Wait. He was supposed to come back and tell all the young people to vote for Joe Biden. Instead, he came back and said that Joe Biden is old, and it's very worrisome. Yeah. No, he had a lot of great points on that, points that we make constantly on the show. But uh, he, people look to him as an authoritative figure, and they tend to trust what he says because he has... The pedigree. Yeah. He's actually done the work to get laws passed, bills passed. He's worked very hard. Uh, he's a great presenter, and he presents it in a way that uh, shows that he's passionate about what he's saying and very funny at doing it. Yeah. 
so call us elder millennials all you want. It felt good to have him back. And uh, clearly. I never thought I'd see the day. Job. Yeah. It's yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And Jordan Klepper hosted the following days and it was fine. He's really good at doing the in-person stuff. Yeah. He's fine at hosting, but like it's just such such a drastic change. And look, it's great that he's giving essentially the Daily Show farm uh, yeah. uh, the ability it's to work on the other that. days because they can hone their craft. His craft's been honed for 25 yeah. years. Yeah. So it's like uh, he's only here for a year. It's allegedly, like bringing Lionel Messi to like the LA Galaxy. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's gonna raise the talent of everyone yeah. around them. He went to uh, Miami, by the way. Oh, he, oh yeah, that's right. You're he he of, is uh, playing in the U.S. I thought yeah. that was a hypothetical. Uh, you're thinking of Beckham, Ab- Abramovich, who was on the LA Galaxy. I think. Beckham came to the Galaxy like ten years ago. Right? Anyway, for like it's, one season, it's going to make everyone else better. Yeah. First of all, second of all, it's like it's like Shohei Otani coming to the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, it, it is worth watching. If you hadn't seen the episode already, the clips are great. They're out there. Uh, people are intentionally leaving out the part where he is also very critical of Donald Trump. Well, so the problem there is that, uh, people were discussing this, a clip that the Daily Show official account posted to Twitter that was like four minutes long. Yeah. Um, and it was actually just very, very cleverly edited in a way where like the cuts were like kind of invisible. Cause when I did get around to actually watching the episode, I was like, Oh, this segment is like 15 minutes long. Yeah. Like they really removed a lot. So a lot of people are like, oh, he doesn't like, what about this? What about this? What about this? And it's like, no, he actually does address all of that in the yeah. full video. Mm-hmm. You just didn't see that in the clip that they showed. Yeah, shoot. and all the comparisons you're making with Emperor Palpatine and fucking Yoda, he makes those comparisons in the fucking full yeah. episode. Anyways, it is worth watching. And it is great that all the other hosts are getting essentially raised by this because the viewership from Stuart being back is only going to help the show overall. Yep. There you go. That's the elder millennial in us. And that's also it for this episode. We'll be back with Weekly Weird News. uh, And we have a recurring character that we haven't heard from in a while that is back in a very big way. So get ready for that. But in the meantime, like this video. Come on. Click the like button. Subscribe. Click the subscribe button. Click the join button if you're feeling freaky. And make sure that you watch our previous episodes like the Cybertruck turning into a big old rust bucket. (laughs) And also the worst ads from the Super Bowl. Check out those videos and we'll see you soon for Weekly Weird News. Bye. Bye.